OK. So today, it is June 1st. Let me write this. 2022. And we will be having midterm number one, midterm number two exam today. And we have somewhat lightweight topics today. Because we have the midterm number two. And also, I mean, this actually is somewhat like a fun topic. OK, the topic is properties of autocorrelation function for white sand stationary processes. OK, so let's remember autocorrelation. So I will write it as follows. R x of, let's say tau, this expected value of x of t, x conjugate, t minus tau. Do you agree? Well, if this is white sand stationary, x of t, white sand stationary, we don't have any dependence on t. Okay? Because if you call this the t first variable, t second time, t first time and t second time, t1 minus t2 is tau, and that is a trick. So in this discussion, which is t2? So this argument with the conjugate, this is the reason that I put the conjugate over here. Maybe this is real value, but I still put the conjugate. So indicate that this is my second variable. That is it. OK, we have already covered this. Now I would like to discuss the properties. Number one. Hermitian symmetry. So this property is as follows. Rx of tau is equal to Rx conjugate minus tau. That is it. So if there is no conjugate over here, then you would be calling this n for all tau even function, isn't it? If there is no conjugate over here, this is an even function. If there is conjugate over here, it's called an Hermitian symmetric function. Hermitian means essentially this conjugation operation. Symmetry is, I guess it is clear. So how can I prove this? This shouldn't be very difficult. Proof, in a way. Now I have our x of tau, this definition, expected value of x of t, t minus tau, conjugate. Do you agree? Now, I would like to take the conjugate of this. One more time conjugate of this. Equality is still valid. Do you agree? Because I have done a dummy operation like this. But let me execute this convolution. So this is equal to the inner convolution. OK. So this is, let's say, this kind of bracket with shadow <laughs> is this one, OK? So inside, if I execute this, then conjugate goes over here, conjugate cancels. I have this. Now what was our definition? T1 minus T2. So this is, then this is the first one. OK, let me write one more time. And compare with this. OK. So this is equal to first variable minus the second variable, t1 minus t2. So this is Rx of minus tau. And I have the conjugate over here. This is the equality. OK. So again, for white sand stationarity, t1, t2. And this is t1 minus t2. OK. Nothing new. Very simple operation. But this is nice. So for the real valued autocorrelation functions, I know that they should be, don't think about this conjugate, they should be an even function. Okay. So this is the reason that in signal processing course, you study function types, even function, odd function, Fourier transform of the even functions, and so on. Now let's go ahead. Property number two. This is a little bit more difficult and more important property. 
positive semi-definiteness. Okay. This is, okay, let me write this and then discuss. So this is a deterministic, I mean a regular function, not a vector, deterministic function, okay. So this looks extremely complicated, isn't it? Two integrals and so on and so on. Okay, let's be patient. So this is the positive semi-definiteness property. So where are the autocorrelations located? Autocorrelation is located over here. So this is Rx, T1, T2. Okay, and if it is white sand stationary, so this is, if it is white sand stationary, then I'm using the same notation, Rx T1 minus T2. I think there is no ambiguity. If I have two variables, I mean, if I have single variables, so this is a function of two variables, this is a function of single variables, even though they have the same name, it's clear that they are different functions. Okay, so these kinds of things, unfortunately, abuse of notation what we call frequently occur because I mean, it's a topic like this, it's so much, so much notation. Now how do I see this? But before how do I see this, let's give it a proof. So how do I prove this? Now I will do the following. This is, this thing is actually equal to whole thing is equal to, so what I will do as follows, I will move this, this is not random deterministic, I will move this inside of the expectation, I will move this inside of the expectation, okay, then they take the expectation out, do you agree? Can I do that? Of course this is just a number, maybe two, three, this number is changing by time but I mean it's constant, so I can evaluate the expectation, multiply by two, three, whatever it is, or I can first multiply and then evaluate the expectation. It shouldn't make a difference. So then the, if I take the expectation out, I have two integrals like this, yt1, xt1, okay. Let me write y, I should write the conjugate also over here, sorry for this. y conjugate t2, x conjugate t2, and I have dt1, d2, dt2 over here. Do you agree? Move them in, then take this expectation out, that is it. One more step, then this is also equal to expected value of So what's going on over here? Well, this is an integral with respect to two variables, but integrant is multiplication, multiplicatively separable. What do I mean by multiplicatively separable? I can separate all t1 functions from the t2 functions. So if this is an integration with respect to t1, I can take this out of this inner integral, because inner integral is with respect to t1. I can put them over here, and if you do that, you have such a result, okay? These are called separable um, integ integrals. So what do you observe? Well, what I observe is that whatever I have over here, I have the conjugates over there. They are the conjugates of each other. So do you agree? Because this conjugation over here, so this is a number, 5, 5 conjugate is also over here. So this is 1 plus j, 1 minus j after conjugation over there. Then this is then equal to expected value of 
magnitude square of this number. And right now it's clear, I guess, this is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Because this is always positive. This can never be negative. It can be zero, but it's never negative. So this is the proof. So how do I see this? Well, this is actually a difficult version of this relation. So I see this relation as follows. Let me write it like this. I see this relation like a vector, a matrix, and a vector multiplication. So this is my R matrix, T1, T2. This is my Y vector. Okay. So this is the 3 by 3 case. So if you replace this integration minus infinity infinity, like a, if visually, maybe you can see a summation like this. Okay. So this becomes a vector matrix multiplication. The result is one more time multiplied by a vector. At the end, you get a scalar. Okay. Maybe you can see this matrix type of relationship over here. For example, multiplication of this, this is my matrix, so this part. So how do you write this vector multiplication? So let me write this vector elements as y1, y2, y, let me write t1 for the sake of simplicity, t, oh no, y1, y2, y3, okay, something like that. So how do you do this? This and this multiplied. So you would be writing this multiplication like first row, first column, okay? So first row means T1 is fixed. For a fixed T1, you are multiplying, T1 is fixed, you are changing T2, and multiplying by this vector. I should put the conjugate also. So this is that multiplication. You fix the T1, you run this integral, one of these T2 integral, this times that becomes this matrix vector multiplication. Okay. Well, that is it. Maybe I should write this. For k is equal to 1 to 3, r, t1, t2, then y, mm, let me write ti, y, ti, y, i. Okay. So this is fixed. t1 is fixed in this calculation. Then you have first row, first column. t1 is 1. This one second column, third row, third column. So we have an issue like that. Actually, this is its integral form. This one is somewhat easier to understand, and positive semi-definiteness is actually related with this, but this is a linear algebra topic. We won't be discussing this linear algebra topic anymore. So this is an important, very important property of autocorrelation functions, as you can imagine, for any y that you can think of. If I do this calculation, at the end I get a non-zero result. Okay, non-negative result, non-negative result. Okay, so this is property number two. Property uh, before that, let me write um, for this one, note, if x of t is y sine stationary, then this result becomes minus infinity, infinity. The reason is, I have this, obviously. This is y sine stationarity for all y of t. Actually, we have written this, but uh, that's okay. Rewrite it one more time, just for clarification. Okay. So number three. This one was a difficult one, but it requires actually more thought, but that's good enough for today. So number three, rx0 is greater than or equal to zero. This is one of the most basic and most important autocorrelation properties. What is Rx0? 
Well, proof is extremely simple, but R x zero is expected value of x of t, t minus zero, as you see, is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's by you know definition of magnitude square. It's always not negative. So this is an even function. And the value of this even function at t is equal to, at variable is equal to zero is positive. Okay, so it has to be like this. Okay, so what's the meaning of this? The meaning is in electrical engineering, this uh, magnitude square is very special to us. So we think that this is like the energy or the power of the signal, isn't it? Okay. So when we think about the power relation, um, there are two types of interpretations. You may consider this power like average power in a circuit. You are calculating average of something, average power relationship. So if this is like a voltage waveform, voltage of the resistor, let's say. So V square over R, so this gives you average power. V is in RMS, think like that, okay? So second power is very special to us. This gives us average quantities. So how about this? This is the reason that we call this processes power. So if you apply this random process x of t as, as a voltage of a resistor, and if you do this kind of a calculation, then you will be calculating the average power, but in terms of ensemble. Do you agree? In terms of ensemble. This is not the time average. In, in Turk theory, in AC analysis, in other topics, when you calculate the average power, it's like long-term power consumption divided by the time, isn't it? Average power, those kinds of issues. But this is, again, the same idea. But the issue is this x of t at that time is random. So this is the average again we say. But it's the ensemble, you know, probabilistic average, N e with respect to this expectation operation. But still, this is very dear to us. It's very important to us. Because most of our energy, conservation of energy, conservation of power, we have several relations like that. Of course, for the random quantities, there will be also similar things. If you that, that will be some, we will be inheriting some of those properties from the deterministic world also to the random world. Okay. So this is this. Let me write expected value of x of t square. So we call this power of x of t y sense stationary process. Of course, this is, needless to say, ensemble average, okay? Ensemble average of this, when we discuss this. Okay, number three is this. Number four, now here is this. This quantity is greater than our x of tau greater than or equal to R x of tau for all tau values. Interesting. So the peak value is at zero. Peak value is at this quantity, okay? So the value, this is an even function. Let's assume it's real value, it's an even function. The value at the zero is positive, and it's peak value, or one of the peak values, because I may have an equality. Well, but that is the case. I don't have anything above that at least. So how do we show this proof? If this is true, then I will do the following. y of t is equal to x of t minus t minus, um, let me write, delta. Okay, just for the sake of difference. Delta. So how can I can I write uh, as follows? Y of t is, sorry, this is equal to x of t is convolved with delta of t minus delta of t minus delta. Do you agree? I mean, obviously. Okay. So can I call this my system, h of t, impulse response? Why not? x of t is the input. This is the system. 
then this is the output. Okay? This is the output process now. Well, I think it's clear input LTI system. So how do we calculate output autocorrelation? Let me write it like this, a little different. What is output autocorrelation? Last time we have covered this. Do you remember? Several convolutions in action. Okay. Input autocorrelation, convolved with impulse response, and convolved with, you know, mm, flipped and conjugated version of the impulse response. So no wonder we have this kind of symmetry properties, isn't it? Because check this, we have this kind of, you know, we are creating this symmetry by these kinds of operations, as you can see. So let me calculate this. So we have said that this is, again, review, deterministic autocorrelation. Okay, so what's my h of t? Let me draw this. h of t is, there is an impulse of weight 1, and there is another impulse, location is at delta, and its weight is minus 1. Am I right? This is this. Okay, so how do you do the convolution of this? If you wish, I can put another marker and switch it back to tau right now. Okay. So if you do this convolution, you should need to flip this. This becomes this moves to over there, and then you do the convolution. This is what it does. So at the end, what do you get? Actually, you will be getting the following. I won't be calculating this. This is 2. And I have again minus 1. This is minus delta and minus 1. Okay? This is my deterministic autocorrelation. Is for this problem, it is this. So one thing, again, basic signal processing notation. These are not the amplitudes of this impulse. Impulse has an infinite amplitude by definition. So this is the area under this impulse, which is 1. Area under this impulse, which is minus 1, because of this minus sign. Okay? So this is the reason that we are drawing like that. You can also draw it like this, but I mean, it's also clear that this is like minus 1. OK, so let's go ahead. Now you may be wondering how, will I, how I will connect this result with this. Isn't it I'm doing some calculation over here? Oh, sorry. So then I have r y of tau. Let's write this. r x of tau convolution with r h of tau, which is this. Do you agree? r h of tau is this. So how about this convolved with this? I have the first term. Convolution is linear. Let me focus on this. First term, convolved with this, 2 times Rx of tau. This convolved with this. How about this one? Minus, well, I'm just convolving this impulse, single one, with this. So it will be shifted Rx of tau minus delta. Okay? Do you agree? Linearity, now this one, minus Rx tau plus delta. Do you agree? Okay, that is the end. Because whatever I have over here, it will be convolved with this impulse. It's just delayed by 0 multiplied by 2. This convolved with this, it's by delayed by delta. Okay, my variable is tau, whatever my variable is, delayed by delta and multiplied by minus 1. 
shift it to the right, shift it to the left, etc. Okay. This is the end. Now, let's evaluate y, y, tau when tau is equal to 0. Okay. To Rx of Rx of 0 minus 2 Rx of my, well, not 2, but Rx of minus tau, Rx of tau. Okay. But this is greater than or equal to 0. Why do I have this? This. Because property 3, Ry, 0, should be greater than 0. OK. Then they're equal to each other. Ry minus delta is equal to Ry plus delta. For, let's say, real valued processes, real value. There is no conjugation. We can generalize this, but this is a simple proof. OK. So what is this? This is the symmetry property, property number one. Symmetry property. OK. So from here, if I go this way, then 2rx of 0 is greater than equal to rx of delta. OK. Sorry. 2rx of 0, move this to the other side. 2rx of delta, then 2's cancel. I have this. This is the end. Do you agree? So what, were, what we were trying to show, rx of 0, let me move this like delta for the sake of simplicity. You should, maybe you should be more careful. This is not the end because you don't see an absolute. I claim that there is an absolute sign of this. So this doesn't have an absolute sign. So what should I do? OK, here is an idea. Well, this is half proof then. So we need to show, show that Rx of 0 greater than Rx of delta in magnitude. So if I show the following, Do you think I can show both of them? If I can show both of them, then this would be equivalent to this, isn't it? So I have shown this. This is done. This is this part. So if I can also show this one, meaning that only difference is there's a minus sign over here. Okay. That means that whatever I have over here, I can multiply it plus or minus sign. So I can take its absolute value. Okay. If assume this is positive, then this is positive. This is negative. Clearly, this dominates. The first inequality dominates, isn't it? If this is negative, then this becomes positive. This one dominates. So I'll be saying that if both of them are satisfied, this is also satisfied, obviously, I mean, by the absolute value. But now my task is, how about this? And I don't want to repeat all of this Think one more time. Do you have any idea how I can have this? Go back. So I need a minus sign. Need the minus sign over here. So it would be glad. I would be very happy if I have plus sign, plus sign over there. Isn't it? It would be very good. Then if I have plus sign, plus sign, I have that. So the issue is, if you check that, then here is an idea. How can I show this part? So repeat the same proof for Rx0, this one, greater than Rx delta for H of t. No surprises. I'll be putting a plus sign over here. Okay. <laughs> delta of t plus delta of t minus delta. Okay. If I do this, 
if I repeat this, I'm getting this. Why? If I have a plus sign over here, this becomes plus, then I have plus, plus, two, okay? That's the issue. So that becomes the proof. Okay, very nice. So we have practiced so many things. We have practiced this LTI, filtering of random processes, y and stationary processes. We have practiced some properties, positivity or non-negativity property at lag variable equal to zero, symmetry, and so on, things like that. And we have a new property. Now you can say that this is not very new because my proof depends on you know, earlier things. I agree, okay. Because if you check this proof, I'm using earlier properties, obviously. But this is something easy to check, okay? It's something easy to check. This is, this is the reason that it's valuable. Now what else? Okay. Now let's have some exercise over here. How much time do we have? Okay. Example, check whether following functions can be autocorrelation functions or not. Now I have function number one. So this is function number one as a function of tau. So this is two minus cosine tau. Now I will have function number two as a function of tau. So, okay, these three dots means that this function is repeating itself forever, okay? These kind of conventions are important. You are making an effort indicating that this is like a periodic function to the right. To the right. Let me also put this, let me also put that over there. Now, let's think about this. Do you think f1 of tau can be an autocorrelation function? Let me think about it. Let me sketch this. Well, at tau is equal to zero, this takes the value of one. Tau is, peak value is when this is minus one. Probably this is at pi, then this will be three. Okay, peak value is at this location and so on. So do you think this can be an autocorrelation function? Why? Exactly. This is not a This cannot be an autocorrelation function because we see that does not satisfy the requirement or property r x of zero is greater than or equal to r x of delta, isn't it? For all delta, because this is equal to one over here, and I see a three over there. Does not satisfy this. Okay, so cannot be an autocorrelation function. Okay. Excellent answer. How about this one? Do you think this can be an autocorrelation function? F2. Do you think this is even? It is not an even function, so does not satisfy evenness property symmetry property. 
i.e. it has to satisfy this Rx of tau, Rx of minus tau. Okay? With conjugate, but I mean this is already real valued. Don't worry. Okay, so not an autocorrelation function. Yes. It is greater than or equal to because this is also one. Okay? It satisfies this. I don't see any value higher than this value. It's okay, but evilness. This time the evilness is there. So what we learn from here is from these properties, we see that some of these functions can be an autocorrelation function, and some others they cannot be, obviously. So let me write something about that. Let me write a note. Now, a valid autocorrelation function then has this kind of properties, like symmetry, positive semi-definiteness, number three, for example, this is greater than or equal to zero. Things like this. It has things like that. Our x of zero is greater than our x of delta. Let's write all of them for all delta. Maybe there are other properties, isn't it? Who knows? Now the issue is, well, from these examples, if this is a valid autocorrelation function, then all of them has to be satisfied. But if these conditions are satisfied, can I be sure that this is a valid autocorrelation function? Well, actually not. These are called the necessary conditions. This is actually something extremely important in science. You should understand necessary condition and sufficient conditions. Necessary condition means that if I have something correct, then these properties are coming with it. But if you satisfy these properties, it doesn't mean that you have this. When you go to a medical doctor, for example, medi medical doctor is doing a diagnosis. He is saying that, oh, are you feeling sick? Maybe he has in mind you have a serious sickness. He is checking, oh, okay, he has fever. He has this, he has that, he has walking difficulties, and so on. At the end, all of these, let me say, features, they are the necessary conditions. But it doesn't mean that if I have all of them, I'll be that sickness. Another example, if this is a car, Object is car. If object is a car, it has four wheels, it has a steering wheel, it has a motor, maybe it can take five passengers, but it won't be taking 50 passengers a car. Properties like that. If you violate any one of these properties, you understand that this is not a car. But how many properties do you need? Well, maybe infinitely many, because these are the features. These are just the features or necessary conditions. Now, there's also something else, the reverse implication. Will it autocorrelation? So I, we will discuss this later on. It's related with positive semi-definiteness. Now you tell me something, and then that will be implying positive semi-definiteness. So sorry, will it autocorrelation? I have saved the result. So let me say. Now these are called, let me say, positivity, I will explain this, or, sorry, non-negativity, <coughs> non-negativity of, I will explain this later on, power spectral density. Next week we will discuss this. Okay, next week. Wait for next week for the meaning of this. Okay, next week. So this implies valid autocorrelations. Okay, valid autocorrelation function. Okay, this is called the sufficient condition. Okay, so we should definitely understand this. In high school or in many, uh, let's say, mathematical calculations, there is implication of both sides. Let me also show this. For example, when x is equal to 1, this means that 2x is equal to 2. Am I right? If 2x is equal to 2, this is also like this. Okay. So this is double-sided. When we have something double-sided, they mean that they're equivalent to this. Whenever you see this, you can replace by this. 
But this is not like that. These are one-sided. It's very important. This kind of differentiation is very important. So these are essentially properties. And we check these properties to see whether I can not guarantee valid autocorrelation function, but if it doesn't satisfy any of these properties, I'm sure that's not a problem. Like, like a vehicle, right? If it doesn't satisfy, if you don't have fewer than you don't have, that's it, it's something like that. Okay, this is very important. I mean, for example, television discussions that form, many of these missing operators, they don't understand the difference between them. They want things that we have this kind of proofs so this argument implies that, so they can imply the reverse argument is not there. Now, let's see an example, one of the final So W of n is a discrete random process. H of n is H0 delta n plus H1 delta n minus 1. So this is H0, this is H1. Now the question is, determine output autocorrelation and input-output cross-correlation. Actually, we have already studied this, and I just want to, in the remaining you know, 10 or 15 minutes, I just want to extend our results to the discrete case. Okay. Now, I would like to say the following. I would like to write the result R W X N one comma N two R W X of K is equal to R W of K convolution with H conjugate minus K R X of K N one comma N two Okay This is R X of K R W of K convolution with H of K convolution with H conjugate minus K. So what's going on? So this K is it's an integer, obviously. So not this. It is n1 minus n2. So previously we were discussing continuous valued random processes. So our arguments were continuous valued. But if it is discrete valued, nothing changes because I'm always, for a random process, thinking about the sample. Okay? So this is the, this already sampled. So this is discrete time, already sampled. But these are integers right now. So n1 minus n2 is my lag, lag variable. Time lag between those two samples, k. I'm not writing tau because k is more looking like an integer. So early relations that we have with convolutions, they are identically the same. Only difference is, now you are doing convolutions in discrete time. Okay? So we have derived this by doing convolutions in, with integrals in continuous time. So they are right now exactly as it is. So theory is exactly the same, because why should it be changing? Instead of continuous time convolution, I write you know, discrete time convolution operations. It is the same. But I just want you to show something. This is something not very difficult, but let me show it. So in this example, we have R x of k is equal to R w of k h of k convolution with h of minus k conjugates. Am I right? This is this. 
So I will again call this deterministic autocorrelation. Okay. So let's try to calculate this deterministic autocorrelation for this h of k. So deterministic autocorrelation. Now how can I ca calculate that one? My h of k is let me sketch it one more time. H0, H1, and it's all zeros. This is called finite impulse response filter. It's called FIR, finite, sonlu in Turkish, impulse response, impulse response filter. Okay. This variable is K. I mean, it doesn't matter, it's just dummy variable. Okay. Now, how can I calculate this operation? Again, minus k is flipped version of it, convolution operations and so on. But right now, we are more experienced. So let me just write it like that. So let me write h of k like this, like a kind of a vector. So in this vector, let me write h of n. So this is n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, like that. So I'm writing the impulse response as if it's like a MATLAB notation. Okay? So this is H0, H1, zeros everywhere, H of n. Now let me write H of n minus 1. H of n minus 1 is shifted version of this. Shifted. So 0 in MATLAB notation, something like that. H of n minus 2. 0, 0, H0, H of n minus 3, 0, 0, 0, H0, goes like this, all zeros. Okay? Something like that. So, what is my, let me see, what is my first deterministic autocorrelation value, R H of 0? Maybe I should write this. This is equal to h of n, h of n minus k, there is a conjugate over here, and minus infinity to infinity. Okay? That is equal to that. So, if k is equal to zero, this is autocorrelation, deterministic autocorrelation for the k lag. Okay? k is equal to 0, I have h of n multiplied by itself and summed up. So this is, number 1, is multiplied by itself and summed up. Assume they are real. Conjugate doesn't do anything. Okay? Conjugation doesn't do anything. So I'm assuming that this is real, this is real. Okay. Now how about our h of 1? Now this is from 1 and 2. So I calculate this one, but it's one shifted version. And then do an inner product, like in MATLAB there is dot multiplication, H0, H1. Because the rest is all zero, as you see, this is, there is nothing else to multiply. This is clear, okay? Our H of 2, of course you can do it in different ways. This is just very elementary, but this. So how about this? Our h of 2, now from 1 and 3. This is 3. Now, these are non-zero quantities. This is multiplied by, well, it's, if it is shifted by 2, then you don't see there is no overlap anymore. If this is h of n times h of n minus 2, h of n minus 2 is, starts from here, so it's all zero. So this is zero. So all the rest is zero. Okay. So what we have found, our h of zero is equal to this quantity. Okay, this is not very, you know, groundbreaking, but I'm missing calculation. Our h of one is h zero times h one. Let me make this different height. And at 2, it is 0. At 3, it is 0. It goes like this. So this is our h of k. 
Now this is the point that you ask, oh, how well, about the negative indexes? Okay. What do you do? You don't calculate it anymore. You say that, oh, I know that this is even. So at minus 1, I have the same height. At minus 2, it is 0, and so on. I mean, it's all 0 for the rest. Minus 3, it is at 0, and so on. Is this clear? So what do I have? Now, I should take the convolution of this with this, and that is our final result. Then output autocorrelation is input autocorrelation times, not times, convolution with this. So how can I write this? H0 square, H1 square, convolution of this with this, RW of K plus H0, H1, RW, K minus 1 plus H0, H1, R W K plus 1. So this is my final answer for this. That is it. So my point is, if you have discrete time processes, everything is valid. Only difference is, we are doing convolutions, it's easier convolutions in a way, in discrete time. And if it is even finite in pass response, it's even much easier. By just doing this, I can get a result. And that would be the output autocorrelation uh, of this LTI filter. Okay. That is all for today.